Why does serverless cloud computing and microservices fail? The answer may surprise you. Let's talk about it. Yeah! First, welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider YouTube channel. My name is Dave Linthicum, your host, author, speaker, b -list geek, and here to talk to you about the truth of cloud computing. And this time we're going to cover a topic that I probably should have hit a year ago. I, I did notice that this uh, article that was brought to my attention was uh, published in uh, March of 2023 last year. I didn't see it. So, and I was writing about the trade-offs between microservices and monolithic architectures for cloud-based systems and some of the reasons to use serverless computing and some of the reasons not to use serverless computing and the same with microservices. So, it's a link down below, but also on your screen now. Scaling up the Prime Video audio video monitoring service and reducing costs by 90%. And so kudos to uh, Prime Video, which is part of Amazon, uh, for publishing this article. Because in many occasions, I don't see people coming clean with architectural mistakes that they made and letting people aware of what mistakes they made so other people can not make those mistakes. And so they went ahead and published it, which is uh, kudos to them. And this is an article by uh, uh, Marcin Cloney. Sorry if I screwed that up, but uh, that's as close as I'm going to get. And ultimately, what they did was fairly common uh, that I'm seeing out there. They were setting up a tool to monitor streams for quality issues within the videos. And they realized that once they set up the tool, that they had had a high cost of scaling and bottlenecks while onboarding more streams. And so in other words, they were moving things to a distributed microservices architecture, leveraging serverless computing. And I do encourage you to read the article. It's, it's very short, very concise, and also has the architectural drawings that, you, that are interesting to me. They should be interesting to you. And then found there was a tremendous amount of under-optimization in doing that. And so they identified that the distributed system overhead as a challenge. And so when they were moving things to a distributed environment, uh, that they ran into some latency issues. And certainly it was using more resources than it should. So it was costing more. The fact that you're paying the cloud service provider to uh, support your application. And they decided to transition from this serverless environment leveraging microservices, in this case, distributed microservices, to a uh, monolith application to simplify the orchestration and reduce costs. And this is fairly common that I see out there. Um, microservices are a very fashionable way to do cloud architecture. And everybody talks about leveraging microservices to get their architecture done in the best way. However, in many cases, while microservices may be uh, a good application in some use cases and some problem domains, you can't apply it everywhere. And it's going to be very inefficient and very cost ineffective uh, if you decide to do that. So as we mentioned a few times on this channel, uh, architects have a tendency to have biases toward one architecture or another, and certainly cloud native and microservices and serverless-based systems. You know, People kind of use that as a battle cry for how they're going to build their cloud-based systems. But in some occasions, and I would say it's about half the time, it's a good deal of the architectures they see out there, that's not going to be the most optimized way to do it, and they're going to be wasting money. And so your ability to spot that and change it is really what good architecture is all about, and that's what these guys did. They went ahead and saw this as a, an efficiency was costing too much money, and they went ahead and changed from a distributed microservices architecture to a, uh, a monolithic uh, architecture. And big savings, the reduction in infrastructure costs by over 90% in moving to the monolith architecture. So moving from a distributed, very cool looking architecture and to a um, monolith architecture, which is uh, you know basically putting everything in a single space, for efficiency purposes for this particular use case was the right decision to make. So kudos to uh, Prime Video for publishing this article. Uh, I think there can be a lot of lessons learned here. So let's discuss those. So last year on my InfoWorld blog, throwing it up on my screen here, also linked below, uh, I talked a lot of about the inefficiencies 
and uh, reasons uh, uh, not to use or the downsides of using microservices architectures. And a lot of it kind of came to light in this problem domain we just talked about as well, in this use case we talked about as well. And there's some things to consider. So if you look at the downsides, um, there's really four. First is going to be distribution. Uh, with microservice communication between the services uh, often occurs over a network leading to latency issues. So the more you distribute things, the more they're going to be fragile because if the network goes down, they can't communicate unto themselves, they're going to fail. Uh, so if you're tightly coupling systems or even loosely coupling systems where there's an interdependence on things that are accessible over a network, such as microservices, but it could be anything really, uh, you're going to be... Um, susceptible to failures because if the network goes down and the network has latency issues or even the architecture itself, you're just kind of built in via the laws of physics, it can't operate at its maximum degree of efficiency. Second would be data management, um, which is complicated with these. Microservices have their own database databases or data stores, complicating data consistency across various services. And it usually requires additional effort to maintain data integrity that enterprises don't understand until it suffers. So data has to be innate to these. Data is going to organically grow over time, and it can be a performance disadvantage of using microservices with data services in this way. And it's always going to be a bit different, but they have a tendency when they're architected and, uh, and deployed to be overly complicated. And that's what's getting to the inefficiencies here. So when in doubt, make it simple. Uh, the most simplest architecture is typically gonna be the most optimized. And we certainly saw that in this case here. There's a lot of reasons to use microservices in this way, and certainly data management is gonna be systemic to the use of microservices, but it's not always indicated in all the use cases that I'm seeing out there. Third are service dependencies, which can be a pain. As microservices interact through APIs, the changes in one service may have uh, implications for others. And we've all seen this. In other words, we have services that are tightly coupled one to another, or even loosely coupled. And there's dependencies in between these things. So we change one thing, the other stuff's going to break. And so it becomes kind of a testing and maintenance nightmare as we try to figure out where the problems are in these systems. Or we do a maintenance change, upgrade a, a software driver on a particular service, and suddenly uh, the, the application doesn't work. And the engineers don't know why until you raise your hand and say, hey, it changes one single service. And that brought everything down. So that vulnerability uh, still exists. It certainly exists with microservices. And finally, resource overhead, which I think is what we're talking about here in the Prime Video use case. Running multiple microservice instances will consume more resources than a single monolithic application for most deployed applications. This can increase infrastructure costs, especially if not managed efficiently, and most are not. So this is the issue that I'm seeing over and over again. In other words, we're moving to a very cool looking distributed uh, architecture where microservices are running all over the place, connected via a network. And uh, we're putting lots of resources and support environments and observability tools and security tools to make that a reality. It's just too much overhead and it's not needed. And so when in doubt, leave it out uh, is, is, what I, is, uh, is my mantra. So make it as simple as you possibly can. And it looks like the Prime Video folks realized that that was their mistake and leveraging the serverless stuff and the microservices stuff and went ahead and normalized it and got to a much more efficient architecture. So the final thoughts on this is that this is something that's most often not fixed. So people build these inefficient architectures that are leveraging way too many resources, costing way too much to operate in the cloud or on-premise, but most, most, time, most of the time it's gonna be in the cloud and they never bother, bother to fix it. So the architectural under-optimization of systems out there is costing businesses many billions of dollars in a single year because we're not thinking through how to do these things in a logical way, and we're not considering the downsides of technology that the press may be promoting as something that's going to be much more advanced, much more viable, you know, much more cool. So microservices certainly have their place and they're a good architectural tool that we're gonna leverage in some instances. Same thing with serverless computing, good architectural tool we're gonna leverage in some instances, but not all instances. And what's happening here is people are saying, 
this is the way I'm always going to build these systems. And I run into these sorts of architects all the time. They're going to be wrong a good many of the times because they're not looking at their use case and they're not optimizing the architecture for that use case. Uh, I can't stress that enough. So, you know, watching this video uh, is a step in the right direction. Learn about the trade-offs of these different technologies and also be skeptical. Understand that in many occasions, that this is going to be the right technology, but not always. And we have to ask the questions and we have to go through and be devil's advocate in terms of what this, this technology is able to bring to the architecture. And if other architectures are perhaps a better choice based on the efficiency, based on the cost advantages, those sorts of things. And it's something that doesn't often occur. So people get to something that, that I always hate this. They go, it works. Of course it works. Uh, their architecture, uh, in the prime video case worked in its uh, before state, um, but it was costing him 90% more. So it works, but it's incredibly inefficient and, and is going to uh, hemorrhage cash. We're not doing our jobs as architects if we build something like that. So we have to get to the most optimized state. And I think we're asking our question, asking questions now about reviewing existing architectures, where this stuff is looking to go and how best to leverage the right architecture for the right reasons, for the right purposes to get to the most optimized state. That's fundamentally why we exist as architects. So anyway, I hope this helped. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, don't forget to comment below. Let me know what you wanna see on this channel. I'm happy, happy to uh, uh, talk about topics that you wanna talk about. So until next time, best of luck with your cloud computing architectures. You guys take care, cheers.